in your line of work, you emphasize the importance of training coordination over isolated strength. Do you mind uh, elaborating this approach? Well, first you have to look at the traditional model and see what the weak point is. Actually, there's two things that are really weak. The first weak point is that it's utopian, right? Classic, classic training. Because you find one approach with all the details in it that is not just plotting out what the benefits are of the training, but also plotting out what the negatives are. It's not there. They only plot out the positives, and that's utopian. Because mm -hmm. in the systems body, it's such that if you want to improve one thing out of cell protection, it will decrease something else. Right? Something else will go backwards. So as long as that is ne not the case, that they're not very diligent in, in plotting out what the negatives are of classic tra strength training, they're really missing the point. And the second th thing that is, in my point of view, wrong in classic training is that they uh, overestimate transfer of training completely. There is no transfer of training that's, that's happening in the way they plot it out. And you mentioned the traditional strength training was it increased the slack of the muscles? Do you yep. mind elaborating what that means and, and why is that a negative thing for athletic performance? Yeah, well, everybody has, has slack. That means that your muscles are not lined up and ready to apply force on the attachment points. You prepare that by co-contracting muscles before they have to apply force. So they have a higher level of tension at the moment they have to apply big forces on the attachment points. If you do heavy resistance training, that doesn't play a role. You don't need it. And that's why if you do a lot of heavy resistance training and you're very sensitive to it, your slack could increase quite a bit. And then in all explosive sports, you go backwards. Yeah. And when you're working in a sport like rugby, where it is combative, how do you find that fine balance between it for the athletes that do need strength training from a um, body composition point of view? Like they need that critical mass, that body armor. But then you're trying to make them yeah. fast. <laughs> so I try to emphasize all the time that if you're in rugby and you want to have more body mass, it should just be your upper body. It should never right. be in your lower. I tried to get so it. Then, yeah. When I showed that the under 20s had bigger legs than the national team, you should never ever do any of your training for your lower body because it's detrimental for your running. Right? If you need more body mass, make sure it's around your shoulders to protect yourself for injury. The second thing I try to get across is that you should eliminate all counter movements in all exercises. Counter movement is a way to take out slack, right? And if you take out slack by making a counter movement, you lose time and you cannot afford to lose time on the field. And can you explain the difference between attractors and, and fluctuators and perhaps in the context of Australian rules football? So if you take AFL, right, it's mayhem. So there's one thing you can do is make your body simpler. So where you have 150 joints that can move in all directions, make sure 140 are uh, joints that you don't need to control. And you do that by co-contracting. So a joint gets into its sweet spot and stays there because all the muscles are interacting with each other. And you find that sweet spot where you, your joint is strongest, less components, less moving parts, so to speak, if you look at good tennis players, the way they hit the ball, the whole action of the arm is actually not interested in where the ball is at all. That's done by the trunk leaning forward, backwards, sideways. So the arm is an attractor, the trunk is a fluctuation. And what you need in AFL is that you're very good at using the attractor to make the body simpler. So you get fluctuations that are perfect for interacting. Why do you think flexibility is so underservedly got a bad name? And do you think it has a side effect on any athletic qualities like elastic um, bounding, for example? First of all, uh, flexibility is an absolute key to uh, self-protection because if you're not flexible, it doesn't mean that all the structures are equally uh, short and stiff, right? So flexibility is an absolute key to self-protection and it's underrated everywhere, every AFL player should be flexible or try to get as flexible as, as you can. And it has no negative effect on performance. I had two high jumpers, one who was stiff as a doornail and the other did martial arts so he could kick, high kicks and everything and do splits and whatever you want. And the boats jumped higher than 230. So there's no connection whatsoever between flexibility and how well you can use your elastic uh, properties. That's a myth.